Hello, this is Hi Bob War Bob, and let's play some Ultimate General Civil War. Yeah, if I did that, he'd get blocked for a second, and then I'd get him, I'd move him a little bit, and that would just block another unit. So you're really good at getting everybody to fire. I have been doing it since like forever. Like, it's like the thing that I've done this whole time. So this one will actually be more innovative. Um, we're going to do two main things here. Um, number one, we're going to march all the way down to the south and ambush three units of infantry and three units of artillery as they spawn in with uh, that one two-star 55, and then I think it's three farmers and a 42. So it is a... No, it's two farmers and a 42, maybe. Maybe it's three farmers? No, two. yeah, two farmers, a 42, and a 55. Um, and the other five units are just... Is it five or six? Five units? The other five units, one, two, three, four, five. Um, we'll just try to take up the time of all the other units um, while trying to get shots on everybody anyway, even though they're not getting shot at. So that's the innovative part. Don't get shot and ambush them. It's it's a little bit of a weird thing. You've got it's really finicky. Um, you've got to have like a soft touch with it, but basically you're just like locking them down with one unit and then firing at them with another, and then you just repeat that over and over again so that your guys never get shot because they're just out of range, but then they get to shoot at other units. It's kind of a like a puzzle stacker kind of thing where. You can't shoot at this unit because you you to turn if you turned you would put yourself in line for the one that you're actually targeting. You would actually get shot by the one you're targeting, so you don't want to. So the enemy unit doesn't want to turn, but then at the same time they're facing a unit that can shoot them from a different direction. Um, so it just kind of, and I've just kind of found this placement to work. So you're slightly concave. Um, and then you just take shots at the sides of units and just kind of... And the skirmishers keep them from charging you, basically. Detached skirmishers pretty much stop all charging. Don't know why, but for some reason, two units standing right next to each other just makes the AI not want to charge, which is fine. That's interesting. Well, he, the AI sees that detached skirmisher is an infantry unit just another infantry so he's looking at instead of three units there there are six that has to affect him so i mean but each one of these guys is basically standing alone on an island with just a skirmisher and a infantry unit <laughs> like yeah. like they're not close enough together to actually support each other from a concentrated push anywhere <laughs> oh yeah the and the ai could always just steamroll over top of us if you just stacked units and got two to one on top of us but the ai can't think that way i think here if i didn't go for the units down there um there's a couple times that i tried to push like all the way out there and actually hold them like right where they spawn mm -hmm. um the problem is there's just too much good cover over there and yeah. um there's not enough good cover for your guys to like shoot from and one of the biggest problems is actually down south in that corner there's just so many trees down in that corner it really hinders trying to do anything weird so this might be the first time we really get to see what I'm talking about um, we'll see that's interesting that unit I'm watching its cover go up little bit better that guy has 92 yeah these these first units that come in are not that aggressive yeah like they tend to just come in and exchange shots that so what they you must program that way what you do is you match the angle of the enemy is one of the things that you have to do with these kind of things um you don't want to be at an angle to them you want to march up and face them like straight on so that they um lock on you lock on basically they're just slightly out of range but they lock on 
So like this guy, I'm going to turn him so that then Gibbon won't fire at him because he's just outside of range of Gibbon. At least that was the goal. Maybe we'll have to fall back a little bit here to keep from getting shot. Yep, there we go. So now Gibbon is locked on to farm two there, but the 42 over there can still fire at Gibbon from an angle. Anderson mm -hmm. is locked on to the 42s, but is getting shot at by the Lorenzes. And then this will also happen sometimes where somehow you can shoot them, but they can't shoot you. That's just a weird thing that happens sometimes. You just got to make sure that you're lined up like perfectly with a unit or they will start being able to shoot you. Um, and you don't want to like, you don't want to put your skirmishers back into your unit while the game is playing. You can do it while it's paused and it won't affect them as long as you pop them back out. Like if you want to just refresh them for uh, um, like condition or whatever, or their size, if they've been getting shot some, you want to just refresh their size, you can do that, but you have to make sure and pause. It will make them start moving and doing things if you put them away while it's playing. Hmm. At least that's what I have found. Interesting. But I tend to do it on pause anyway. Right. And it just makes sense to do it on pause because it's a lot of micro to try to do it. Um, and you can you can only hold them in place while it's on pause too. So yeah, it just makes sense. But you can see the basic like, idea. Yeah, like normally these guys would come up and exchange shots with you, but you have it set up so that they're just standing there dying. Right, which lets me grind firearms and use ammo and get some kills. I'm not getting like a ton of kills. I mean, they're just 42s and they're just one stars for most of them. That Lorenz will get a bunch of kills though. That two star Lorenz will decimate some guys from the side like that. And you kind of want to get them to stop. You can see that Gibden, Gibden, Gibson is kind of not in full cover. Kind of standing out in the open a little bit. Um, which helps out, you know, getting a couple more kills on him. Trying to move just a little bit closer here. I think I might find the right spot where I can actually fire, but I'm not sure. You just kind of fidget with it and see if you can find a spot where you can fire and they can't. If not, then you just fall back and just let them kind of hang. Yeah, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this is absolutely great, uh, but these guys are going to run out of ammo eventually. But it doesn't really matter because as long as they never charge you and they're never firing at you you win any exchange yeah and every single one of them gets to be out of ammo pretty quick <laughs> i'm not gonna lie like it is pretty bad for ammo yeah i intentionally oh. of course you know one of the big things that this video gives to people is exactly what units come in where so that you can properly uh, strengthen both flanks. Uh, like, I've played this in, I don't know, two undersized infantry and a bunch of artillery came in on this flank in this phase, which had no chance of holding anything. So, yeah, this this is actually very, very strong over here. And I guess one other thing to mention is if you go all out in AO, you can bring one more additional unit on this side in the starting portion if you bring 20 units in your main core you will get one extra unit from your main army over here but that is the only additional unit that you can gain for this phase well yeah, no you, no you, you can all... you can gain some extra reinforcement ones i think you can gain like two or three more reinforcement ones if you just bring a few more on your um, backup core. But you can't gain any that are actually starting on the battlefield except that one. And bringing 20 units instead of like four, 15 is a huge investment. Yeah. Well, and the units have to be smaller. Like, I brought more units, but they were smaller. Right. If you only have so many men. I mean, the... the, I mean, the, the you brought everybody but 15 guys so everybody's in the army it's just if you want to have a whole bunch more units you can it those units are going to be 1200 instead of 2000 or something like that does that make sense very true very true 
So I'm I'm not sure. Like if all these guys were 1200, this would be a very different battle. You'd be doing a lot less damage. Right. They'd still be running out of ammo. So yeah, I'm watching this. I've never seen Shiloh with this many men on this phase doing this kind of work and doing this kind of damage. Any any other? Yeah, you could bring more units, but if they were smaller, they wouldn't be doing this. Yeah, and I didn't even want to go up to 2,500 because I found that the 2,500 was just too big of units for me to be able to make as many units as I wanted. So there's no reason to even go with another AO just for that bigger unit size even for me. Yeah, I thought 2,000 would be, you wouldn't have coverage, but you have plenty of coverage. And and the other thing is you don't have the officer core for 2,500. No. <laughs> I mean... You were struggling with colonels and brigadier generals and were using lieutenant colonels in units that are 2,000. Yeah. There's no way you had an officer corps that could have gone to 2,500. I mean, you don't have that yet. You're going to have to fight some battles and grind some promotions. I mean, it, it would mean that I would have less units, therefore I might not have to stretch out to um, lieutenant colonels. Um, and one thing is, is that I could lose like one unit of infantry and gain like 10 units of artillery yeah, or I'd consider make all of my artillery just like four guns. I'd consider that to be a waste of time at Shiloh. You don't have the ammo for it. I mean, I've, you, you saw my legendary battle. I brought a lot of artillery to that. I think it might've been my major general one where I brought a, just a ton of artillery but you know how I like to do now, which is get an infantry unit to three stars and then start pumping out, you know, an infinite number of three-star artillery, snipers, and cav. That's just the easy way to build specialty units. You brought about 400 more artillery men to this battle than I did. And they're just, they can't fire the whole time. Which you don't is have the ammo only it. like, what, 16 guns? Because four by four, because you get four guns per 100. Right. So it's not like, see, and then sometimes they'll do this whole thing where they target a guy that they can't shoot, and then you have to, like, retarget him. Fun times. I know you're expressly acquainted with that phenomenon. Uh-huh. And Jackson's doing, like, the perfect thing this time. Sometimes Jackson will walk forward, and then they'll start, like, walking all over each other which gets uh -huh. a little annoying, but this time Jackson is sitting, like, perfect place. Exactly where I want him. Because as long as they stay just like that, they're all three stars, they're all, like, max size. Like, you don't want to take on these guys, like, in a stand-up fight. I think they all, all the have better guns than me, or at least as good of guns as me. Well, the other thing is because you have the, the, the UI option that these guys aren't aren't being degraded by size. They're doing more damage per shot just because they're three thousand, but they're not getting the penalty. Right, and like they're, I mean, they're, they're... my guys are only at eighteen hundred. Whenever you take yeah. into account the fact that I've broken off the skirmishers. Right, and normally that'd be great. Your your efficiency would go up, but in this case, it's not doing anything for you at all. I mean, it does a little bit because you do. Like we said, um, you do have a small diminishing return factor there. Yeah. So you do lose some of that diminishing return and then put it into another unit. And skirmishers do about half the damage of a full 2,000-man infantry unit. And for 200-man to be doing half the damage of a 2,000-man unit is definitely worth it to go ahead and split off that skirmisher and, and get that extra half again more damage here i'm yeah, doing the other... trick to keep out of melee because somehow that's in melee range i yeah, don't that's a glitchy thing that happens yeah tribute just spawns too far out so he always retreats in weird ways so i have to use some of the cheats for that to keep them from being all weird pond yeah. walks forward he's gonna make everybody start shifting around again so every once in a while you just have to check in up here and just make sure and tell everybody to back off or get closer or do different things to keep from getting shot a bunch so now we get back out of range of gladden yeah that's interesting it you're 
42s are getting two to one kills against a three star. I mean, and, 97 to zero right there. Boom. Yeah. It, 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 it's it not going to hold up. It, it is amazing in the early game how like terrible the weapons are, and you look at the numbers and they're so tiny. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I am fighting in like full cover though. Yeah. Gladden's starting to walk over, which is a problem, because now he's going to get really close to my 42s up there. So all we get for reinforcements is two artillery and a supply wagon. Obviously, the supply wagon is amazing and much needed. The two cannons are not going to do a whole lot, but they'll help hold off some of it. Yeah, you, you showed me this before in just a quick snippet that you've sent units forward and wiped these guys out. Uh, so that for the people watching at home, this has got to be shocking. Like I've never seen anyone do this except the last time I that you showed me a snippet when we weren't recording um, of your moving forward and, and wiping these guys out. I mean, this is just a great innovation. I really like this course you have this problem where somehow that's melee range like i can't even see yeah. any of his sprites anywhere near my unit and somehow yeah. that's melee yeah. i it just boggles my mind how this game sometimes melee range like you can be on another unit and not be doing damage and then other times like you're not even close to them and you're in melee but the, everything near the edge of the board, and especially in the corners, is just glitchy. It's just, it doesn't work how you'd expect it to. I mean, mechanically, this game... Like there, well, that guy looks like he's touching them, but yet I'm yeah. not in melee. But no earlier, melee. whenever they were like a full width of a unit away from me, I was in melee. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. sure, sure game, sure. Yeah. Yep. Now, you would expect this to be melee. I wonder if it's going to be. I think I pull back enough first. Yeah, I pull back enough first. Um, I might cheat a little bit to get keep the farmers up with Tribute because somehow they can outrun me. Which doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Like, my unit is, like, up there and mostly fresh and their unit just got shot to pieces and somehow they can outrun me? I don't... Whatever. Oh, yeah. A enemy units have always had r roller skates. Routing whatever. units are just so fast sometimes. So now we want to yeah. move forward again. Um, you can see that that area right there is only 75% cover. The reason why I start out closer is because there's a band of 100% cover, just one unit width closer that you want to mm -hmm. stay in for those first shots against Tribute, but then yeah. you want to back out of them so that you don't get into melee and then come back into them once he passes because you never want to be in 75% cover whenever you could be in 100% cover yeah I, I have always been amazed how you're able to get that extra 10% cover by like looking at the terrain map and figuring out there's one more tree over here yeah like I, I never quite pull that off I'll go at eh, 75% it's good enough but yeah. then I take more losses than you do if it's if it's not like 90% I don't want to be taking cover I don't want to be taking shots while I'm there <laughs> yeah and I'm perfectly fine get in the trees get some cover yeah that's good enough but I, I've noticed I've changed my gameplay a little bit. Like I'll look at the, I'll check the cover of every unit, check the ammo of every unit, on pause, and then I'll start looking around and saying, "Can I get a little bit more cover if I move this guy?" Because I didn't ever used to do that before I started watching your videos. Can I get like an extra five or ten percent? Because it, it really does affect your losses. It has a huge effect. It's not insignificant. It is not. It is. It is pretty powerful. For sure. So you can see all three of their artillery are now on the field. All three of the uh, units of infantry are on the field, um, along with Breaking Ridge. Breaking Ridge can do some weird things for your um, field of fire. It 
squirrely as all get out. Like like you were saying, along the corners of the map and other things, it just makes it really hard to uh, get into the right situations and like keep out of trouble with a lot of your units. But I mean, you can see that like Gibbon and Anderson up there have been taking shots this entire time from both of those units up there without shooting at all. They've lost 800 men and 500 men, respectively. Mm -hmm. like for basically zero losses on my side um that is a very good start to a battle yeah 364 kills on that one i don't know how many the lorenzes have but they probably have they probably have most of that 800 that they killed on anderson um by themselves so here i kind of forgot to shoot for a second and now tribute's kind of recovered a bit and turned whenever I would have rather shot him flank on and kept him running um yeah because this is legendary they recover insanely yeah. fast now of course he's firing a sporadic volley so it's not a big deal but it would have kept him going long over further longer and faster yeah. so that, so that it would leave me more time to like do what I want to do which is get him all the way into that corner instead of having guys that are like all spread out along the way. Overall, it's not bad. Yeah, that farmer's getting very good kills though for just, I mean, he hasn't been in combat that long and he's doing really well. The 55 does the best though. Oh man, oh, yeah. with flank shots like that. Whew, he has so many kills from over there. 467 to two. Like that's that's where it's at right there and also he's a two star so it's like you're not taking very many losses you're getting really great kills on him so you're gaining some really nice experience oh uh, so i decide that i really want to get closer because i think breaking ridge was blocking my shot so if you like target breaking ridge for like half a second here he'll run and then you can start shooting the infantry once he's yeah. like ran out of your range um for some reason they don't like being targeted that's interesting um and that happens a lot whenever you can't shoot the infantry in it but sometimes you'll have to actually move closer to even be able to shoot the general because the general is outside of your range but yet somehow blocking your shot yeah don't ask me how that works because that makes less than zero sense but somehow it does But yeah, absolutely melting with the uh, 55s over here. Um, you want to make sure and keep their attention with the farmers and the 42s up top so that they don't turn around and face your 55s because you don't really want to take losses on your good units if you don't have to. And obviously, I'm basically ignoring the north. Once you get it set up, you can oftentimes ignore it for large stretches of time as long as nobody retreats. And most of the time, you're not actually looking for getting flank shots. You're just looking at keeping them bound in place so they never route, but they never fire. So right. you don't actually want them to route back because that causes them to come back forward and do weird things whenever they come back forward. Yeah. Um, so getting slow, steady, absolute max range shots on these units is exactly what you want kind of get a nice shot on a cav that's always nice that's always very satisfying it is i mean it's just a little bit of payback for all the time they've spent you know making my life miserable so evidently yep. i just left my artillery up there and completely forgot about them for like i don't know 30 minutes an hour i don't know yeah i was watching the strategic map and i saw them not moving i was going to say something but that was yeah i always keep an eye on the strategic map like it's the, my rear view mirror because the strategic map always lets me know if I'm in trouble somewhere. So I glance at it a lot. I need to get better at it. Um, I get drawn in, especially to complicated battles like down in the south there. Like, yeah. that takes a lot of my concentration. Like, look, man, he's almost out of ammo already. Just from sitting there and shooting into that one guy that whole time. Yeah. That's the experience at Shiloh. People run out of ammo. 
now of course i should have moved my ammo wagon forward faster but he would have gone to the south first because you want him to come to the south first and then go back towards the north um because you want him to be able to go over to the next section um as soon as the uh battle opens up ah at least that's my take on it well if you only have one wagon then it has to cover both sections Right, but even if you get another wagon, it spawns in way back at the back. I have always been able to get it there, but somebody's going to run out of ammo. Oh, yeah. A lot of my guys over there are already almost flashing. Yeah. And that's just because I, for one thing, I'm using, um, like, 55s and Harper's Ferries over there. Like, I think two Harper's Ferries and over there and they use ammo like i don't know 25 percent faster i think just because they fire faster right but of course they do have the perk that makes them fire 10 percent slower ah so but i still feel like they use ammo up quite a bit faster anyway even even considering that So here I just want to keep them routing, but I don't want to use up my shot on my full infantry unit because I want to keep them running. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm using machine gun skirmishers, but it's mostly to conserve condition on my unit, not like trying to get a bunch of extra damage, but it definitely works well in their um, getting their uh, cannons wiped out. Well, I... I think I'm going to machine gun skirmishers at Shiloh with both uh, Union and Confederate campaigns because of ammo. Yeah. It, it just ammo is is the problem. And I and you've you've watched my campaigns. I always try to come in with two wagons at 35,000 ammo each and ammo is still a problem. Well, it's a real problem for the CSA cuz there's nothing you can do about um, keeping one entire keeping your allies supplied. I mean, your allied units, if you're playing the CNSA, you're just going to... It's a horrible struggle. And the innovation you introduced was uh, don't fire the unit, just keep detaching and firing the skirmishers and you won't run out of ammo. You see there, I finally let Gibson move now, which is a problem. Yeah, once the units run out of ammo, they're just going to become exhausted. My units? Yeah. Then then they're, they're just pretty useless. Things still sit there and keep firing every once in a while, but it's pretty slow. It's actually ended up working out pretty good because Chalmers now is not firing. It seems like we're down to almost nobody firing now on their side. Oh, nope. Gibson is firing now. I thought I was getting close. So we'll come down there and then we'll go back up and around. Um, here... I'm trying to do two things. I'm trying to conserve my condition um, because I don't want to lose too much condition for whenever I will inevitably want to charge at these units. And I also need to conserve ammo because this is all the ammo I get for these units. So firing with their skirmishers is kind of helpful just to keep me from running out of ammo. Yeah. And, I mean, this is too far for my supply wagon to get down here and then back up to get to the other side. I mean, this is a huge hill that we have basically ran down here. I would definitely kill Breckenridge right now. There's, he'd be my number one target. My it's... number one target is their stupid um, cannons, because if they recover, they will make gonna... my life absolutely miserable. The infantry units, I can always get, like, flank shots, and it takes them a long time to, like, turn and do things. And I've got okay cover for that, but, like, as soon as artillery starts recovering, like, it just gets to be a mess. And Breckenridge keeps wanting to run away, so there's just... I can't even, like, get him to hold still long enough to get a good shot on him. I think we wipe out that artillery now. Oh, blocked. Whatever. That is not blocked by anything. He's in the middle of an infantry unit and overlapping with Breckenridge. 
he's not blocked. So I was able to get okay cover here. The problem is that if you back up far enough to get good cover, you're then outside of range of most of the units, and you do not want them to start recovering. You want to keep the fire on them. Yeah. It gets bad if you let and, them... And that's, that's one of the huge benefits of detached skirmishers, is just the effect on enemy morale. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's another... Like fifty percent extra damage, basically, which yeah. is a huge morale debuff on the enemy. I think we're gonna wipe out both of their units of artillery here, which is good. Gone. Yeah. Gone. And there's also now this I... convenient little patch of trees here for me to go stand in, which is nice. I know that this is a little bit slow, but. It'll speed up once we get done with this phase by quite a bit. Uh, th the thing I'm thinking is this has to happen. You have to kill these guys and then get these units out of here so they can get back into the battle. And yeah, because so they need to do the flanking on all the units up in the north. Yeah, so the sooner you can... Like, this is... This has to happen, and it has to go well. Like, you can't lose this and your units can't get exhausted and a whole bunch of things have to happen so that they can do what they need to do next uh too bad breckenridge just seems to be he just like, runs away not, every time i target him yeah not just dying like, whatever so then i'm just like i guess i'll just fire at somebody else then and we'll kill somebody else yeah there was a question on reddit about you know do you who do you target and uh, do you target generals? And especially on legendary, killing the general is one of the most important things you can do, especially before going into melee. You want that general to be dead. Whoa, what happened up here? Killed that guy. I mean, killed a lot of that guy. Look, 1,125 kills on that unit and 18 deaths. <laughs> wow. That is just wow. Yeah, he started out at 3K and he's down to 1,700. All from just like one unit shooting at him continuously, basically. That is, that's terrific. Yeah. It's, yeah. Look, look at all the sprites on the ground. I mean, that's yeah. Just... It's it's pretty disgusting. And we came over here, and he was gone. I was thinking, that's that's awesome. Yeah, it didn't he... quite shatter, but I mean, you can see that they're all getting down like seven, eight, nine hundred men down from starting numbers. Yeah, this um, is just the first phase on this side. Yeah. We just need ammo. I can't get all of them down, because, like, Jackson over there, down a little bit further to the south, like, you you really almost don't want to face their entire army right now, because they outnumber my units up here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think by one or two. Like, I guess if you count the cannons, they don't outnumber me, but if you just go straight off of infantry, they outnumber me by a few units. Oh, and here we get into the perfect places with this Lorenz so we can still shoot him with our main unit. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll just find a really good spot and uh, they just won't shoot you, which is... It's basically just down to luck at some point. Here, yeah, we're just going to keep moving forward a little bit. Yeah. They were able to gain probably 20% condition back during that little bit of time while their skirmishers were still able to fire. Which isn't, like, a ton, but it's enough to, like, make it where they won't be just absolutely useless if they have to get into melee. Right. I think I get them up to almost 100 by the end of all this. So you hold them in place with the guys up top, and then hopefully the 55 will get all the flank shots. That's the idea and then once they get up to about 100 condition then you can just have them start unloading all together oh wait oh I see that they're all not flashing right now so I'm like okay we'll just unload a full volley on the biggest one you always want to shoot the biggest one um, mm -hmm. so that you don't accidentally shatter somebody yeah because that is definitely something that can happen you can just accidentally shatter a unit <laughs> that's bigger than what you would have liked to have shattered. So. 
Yeah, I always try to hit the, the largest unit. Of course, and right now it's a little bit easier whenever there's only three, but it can be difficult it, sometimes. At this range, the farmers should be doing really well. I mean, at close range, the farmers are very good. You can get a thousand kills on a farm. Uh, a farmer can get a thousand kills in a battle. I think a couple of my farmers get a thousand kills in this battle. Yeah, especially if they're close. They're, yeah. They're not bad. I very mean, close. That's a 42, and it's got 802 kills and two losses. So definitely possible to get a thousand kills on a farmers i mean 42s are not that much different than farmers and that's at max range with a 42 yeah and he's still got that many kills yeah i never found that much difference between say a reboard farmer and a 42 they're about the same weapon even the farmer is not that much better is it or that much worse is it than a i thought at long range the farmer was pretty is it pretty uh, bad? Pretty, yeah, but right up close. I the, always forget. The farmer is good, and if you can get them in a position where they're in cover and they're shooting at short range, they're they're very good. And of course, if you get them in the melee, then you know they're terrific. Which I, mean, I never understood that mechanic at all. You know, it's a it's a. So the forty two is only twenty percent at max range, and so is the reboard farmer. But the farmer is 18%, so it's a little bit lower. But it's shouldn't a... Be that yeah, it shouldn't be that much difference. The, the roll that they have is like a 1.8 to 19.8 on damage. So if you roll basically a 20 on damage, like, no matter what range it is, they do really good damage. But whenever they're short, medium range... It's absolutely devastating whenever you roll a 19 because that is like the highest damage, I think, per shot that you can get is that 19. Yeah, it almost works like a shotgun. Um... I mean, in all reality, shotguns are better than what we make them out to be in games, but... Yeah, and, and, and there were units like the Irish Brigade who wanted weapons that were basically smooth bore and work like shotguns where they just put lots of pellets in it and they unloaded and I forget how many pellets fit in the you know the smooth bores that they used but they they only worked at short range you couldn't stand back so their whole strategy was run up right into the face of the enemy and unload like a devastating volley of course the downside of that is you got shot to pieces while you were moving up right next to the enemy because he could start killing you at quite a distance and you couldn't do anything about it. So yeah, now we're up to 100% condition. So I go ahead and start taking them off of hold fire. Yeah, using this technique to get to 100% condition is like a really, really great, great mechanic. Keeping them routing by using everybody else, all the skirmishers to keep them routing and then and making sure that you like fire at flanks like you can see that there's like a flank for one unit from one side and a flank for another unit from another side and you just fire with whichever unit to whichever unit gets a flank shot yeah and that can really help um just keep you from losing more men than you should so oh, here supply wagon. wagon getting there just in time yeah, I mean, that guy's full up now. The 42s down there probably are still a little bit low. Um, I went ahead and turned them off of giving artillery ammo because the artillery came in so late. And I just feel like they're not the thing that's doing the most damage for me, probably. Yeah, I, with the amount of ammo you're bringing, I would have turned off the uh, resupply for artillery, too. Just let them fire. Um, even if I bring two full supply wagons at some point in this battle as the Union, I always have to turn off resupply for artillery, even with two full wagons, and you don't have two full wagons. I don't even have one full wagon. Well, it's not even one full wagon, is it? I mean, it's no. only about 25,000, 29,000 in one wagon. Yeah, it's like, I think it's 26 it's or 29, yeah. Yeah, Somewhere it's not there. even full. So... With two full wagons, I would turn off the artillery at some point, and with the amount you're bringing, I just would turn it off from the beginning. 
Because if your infantry runs out of ammo, if all of your infantry units run out of ammo in this battle, it's you're, you're not going to win. You're, you're, it's going to be awful. I mean, most of them are dead at this point, though. So, except these guys up here. Yet. I mean, for your whole army. Right. Like, but... well, I, I remember playing this, like, first time I played it, and I just ran out of ammo. Like, and all my units ran out of ammo. And that's just not going to, like, the one of the very, very first times I played Shiloh. I'm just saying, like, by the end of this, my guys won't be too bad on ammo still, which is kind of amazing seeing as... It's amazing how much ammo they have if you use it in the right way. Yeah. You just well, gotta... my, strategy, my strategy for the Union Legendary campaign was um, bring tons of artillery and just blast away at the enemy, and the infantry was just a frontline protection for the artillery. So a whole different way of thinking. But you can't do that at Shiloh. You don't have the ammo to keep the artillery firing. You have to... This is an infantry fight. So, yeah. These guys just... I mean, that guy's already down to half strength now. It's amazing how many kills that Lorenz has gotten while taking yep. basically no shots, but standing, like, right there where he could just take two steps forward and shoot me. <laughs> he just doesn't. Well, I, I was just thinking, you're going to be surprised how many 20-pound parrots you're going to be able to get as the Union. Yeah. It's not like the CSA at all. It's a huge number. It's going to be nice. You're going to be able to build uh, bigger batteries too so because you're using the UI mod and you've set it to you're not going to get the uh, the old damage curve you're going to get the new damage curve so uh, it would be interesting to see what you do with that if you build really large 20 pound parrot batteries and a whole bunch of them I think I'm still going to want to keep them relatively conservative just because it is sometimes nice to be able to like have a couple of different units. Um, I'm probably not gonna build like 24 size or anything like that. It's probably gonna be like 14. I mean, that was basically what I built on the last run though, um, was 14 size, maybe maybe 16. Um, I don't think I'll get much bigger than that just because until like late game. Um, yeah. Late game, whenever I'm running into like, I literally have too many units. Yeah. I probably will start where it's just like I don't have enough slots yeah to like deal with anything but having like 24 men and I had 24 guns and an artillery unit so yeah that's that's gonna happen yeah so that's probably the, the point where I'll do that so so here I've, I noticed that whenever I break out the skirmishers he turns to face him and whenever uh -huh. I put the skirmishers away he turns back forward <laughs> That, so that, I kept that, playing with him and like turning him around. It was kind of funny. Yeah, you want him to do the dance of death. Yeah, I, I like in the corner too how the enemy is now at the phase where he's just all his units are white and, and just getting shot to pieces. Yeah. So that's that's nice. You know, I'm looking at your 12 pound howitzer. People underestimate what that does. It doesn't get a lot of kills, but it is it somehow does incredible damage to enemy morale. So. The 12 pound howitzer is not as useless as people think because a lot of times you just want the enemy to lose morale and then do sporadic firing like some of his units are doing right now where if they're doing that sporadic firing thing they're not doing any damage to your army at all you're just standing there dying that is very true i don't think that i'm doing enough morale damage to most of the units for that to happen um mostly just because i don't really care about it all that much right now um i've been saving the 55 you've noticed that he's been at almost 100 percent condition this whole time yeah the whole reason to save him is because i want him to be able to march north and actually help um yeah. whereas the rest of these units yes they'll be able to march north yes they'll be able to help but they're still only farmers and they're still only 42s so their amount of help that they can do towards like breaking fresh units is less than what yeah. a like a really well ammoed 40 uh 52 can uh, 55 can do um so here we're just gonna get into melee some 
I don't want to get into melee with my 55s, because that just doesn't make any sense. You don't really want to shoot into that melee either, because it just leads to more problems. Um, basically, we're going to get into melee with, I think, two units here, and probably end up getting into melee with the other one as well in the end. I think I would send the two farmers in just so I had two on one on the enemy. Although they're, they're doing pretty... They're doing fine. One on three. But, um... And keep the 42 back so the enemy stayed in the corner. But the odds of him running out of this corner to some other corner is, like, not very good. Well, you say that, but they're not going to surrender. Ooh, they're not going to surrender. They are not. not in not... the ten minutes that are left in this section. Oh, and then their condition is reset. No, it's not that bad. Um, what happens is the map actually opens up. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does open up, and then they're going to go back into the the corner to the right. Yeah, which is more forested than this. Or there's a lot yeah. of forest between this and the corner. I think it's actually technically less forest, but there's a huge forest between this and the corner, so it takes a while to, like, get there. So here we're, we're finally lining up with this guy, so we quit getting shot, which is nice. Should have stopped this from happening a long time ago. Should do something about it, but I'm not going to, I guess. I'm just going to... I mean, they are flashing firing. They're not actually, like, full firing, so I guess I'm okay with it. Oh, yeah, that's great. But I really want that 42 to move forward so that I can actually, like, engage against him with more units, but it's just not meant to be. And you got to hold two units back. If you don't hold units back, bad things happen. Just everybody out there know that you never want to have all of your units engaging in a melee in a corner, ever. Right. It's yeah. just terrible because they will start routing out in every direction. Yep. Whereas if you do it like this, where you have at least one unit or two units back, you can make sure and keep them from routing in a direction you don't want them to. Here yeah. I finally decide, okay, I need to just get the last guy in there to try to get him to surrender. And I'm too late on the uptake with that last farmers. I should have done it a little bit sooner. Oh, and also, whenever the this phase gets over, it also resets your charge as well. So you can't charge whenever the phase resets. Nice. Which is I, I, not good. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know that. So that charge that I have going over there is going to get, like, about halfway through the charge meter, and then it's going to reset and... Then you have to wait for it to fully reload again before you can charge again, which is. And by that time, he'll be completely to the right. So. Yeah, it's it's not particularly fun. The good news is is that those three units gain, oh my goodness, melee experience. <laughs> well, this has been a blast. Hope you guys have had as much fun as I've had. I'll see you again in the next episode. You guys have a good one, 